Hi everyone, Gigabeef here with another Escape from Tarkov tutorial video. Today we're going to be looking at basic weapons modding. As a new player, some of the first questions are, how do I put a scope or a red dot on my AK? How do I get a vertical foregrip to fit on a weapon? We'll answer these questions in this video, where we'll be discussing weapons modding and how you can use this to improve the performance of your guns without costing you a fortune. Mods in Tarkov can have dramatically different cost efficiencies, and to get to the top meta builds you can spend a lot of money on the last few points of ergonomics or recoil control. However, for a value build, this is not necessary. I'm going to run through a few of my favourite setups for pure value, but first, we need to lightly touch on recoil and ergonomics. Recoil is pretty obvious. The lower the number, the less the gun jumps around when it's fired in the vertical and horizontal axes. Ergonomics affects other attributes, the most important being the time to ADS, which is most important for close combat so you can react quickly, and also affecting the stamina loss with that weapon when you hold ADS. This also changes the sound you make when bringing the gun up. Modding is a balance between these two elements. For close quarters, ergo is important for the reduced ADS time, but you'll also benefit from reduced recoil, although very close up this matters a bit less. Assault rifles for medium range engagements typically require a balance of these two attributes, but recoil control becomes more important the further you are from your target with semi and automatic weapons. Interestingly, when you go to the really far range, bolt actions only need ergo, as you'll be holding ADS for long periods in which you don't want your stamina to instantly drain down. Recoil doesn't matter anymore with these guns due to the low volume of fire when you're only firing one shot at a time. So how do we get a scope on a weapon? Unlike many games, Tarkov has an incredibly rich modding system, which sticks as close to real life as possible. Only items that would actually connect up in the real world will fit, so to attach a scope, a foregrip or stock, you must have the right mount or connector to make it happen. Let's look at the first example on an AK. Taking the stock AKMS, which is one of my favourite starter guns, there's no way to add sights without making some adjustments. Here's where the flea market comes in very handy, as we can generally buy everything that we need to make our weapon work in the way that we want. So the easiest way is to get the Bastion. This comes with a Picatinny rail, which fits loads of mods and allows for connectors in case you need something specialised, like the primary arms or the ACOG scopes. So you see here on the flea market, you can get these compact mounts for sights, which fit straight on. However, there is a cheaper alternative for certain red dots, and it's a little hidden away. The TTO-1 in the sights replaces the rear sight and allows for a limited set of red dot attachments. We can see which by using the linked view on the flea market. So we just go to the flea market, move down into sights, and we can see all of the sights that it supports here. From these sites, the pillad is probably the cheapest and is okay, but I would always make sure that you set the dot to an actual dot rather than a cross because the lines are very, very thick. But this fits easily. The second one is PK06, a real staple. This is very, very small, but it has a very nice aperture, it's very, very tight. Another standard EKP does not actually fit on the TT01, so you're going to have to fit that onto the Bastion directly if you actually want to use it. Now, both the Bastion and the TT01 fit onto the AKMS. But not directly, just always remember, get rid of the rear sight, otherwise it won't fit. It's extremely frustrating. Then for the Bastion, this replaces the receiver. So get rid of this, pop on the Bastion, obviously without the TTO one on it, and there you go. Now you can attach the EKP. So now as well as the EKP, we can attach other scopes like the Monstrum 2 times. This just fits on the back in the same way. Now one thing to bearing in mind is the EKP here you see is the standard one that fits on top of a Picatinny rail. There's another EKP here which fits on a dovetail mount. Now the AKMS doesn't actually have this slot, um, but some other guns like the SKS do have this dovetail. The SKS, the Hunter and uh, N versions of the AK all are allowed to have these attachments. So just be careful that you actually buy the right one for the weapon that you're trying to use. I mentioned the SKS. While we're on the topic, just make sure, if you're going to buy an SKS, that you buy this one, the hunting rifle version, the o or otherwise known as the OP SKS. This version, the original one, just the semi-automatic carbine, does not have the dovetail adapter, and so you can't attach any scopes or any mounting points. This piece here makes all the difference. Typically speaking, it's this darker one that doesn't, and the lighter one that does, but it is possible to replace the stocks. So you can see here somebody's replaced the stock from a hunting rifle version. Actually, that's interesting that it doesn't show up here, but it would, it would still let you attach something. It's probably because this piece is missing off that one. So just make sure that you always buy the hunting rifle, otherwise you're not going to be able to attach any scopes to your SKS, which is going to be irritating when you come to try and mod it. 
Next up, let's talk about foregrips. Again, most starter weapons don't come naturally with rails to add foregrips, so we've got to do some light modding to get them ready. Back to the AK series. One general issue for a basic mod is that the handguard is hidden around the gas tube, which makes it difficult for newcomers to figure out exactly what to do. So down here we have the handguard, and here we have the gas tube. Now it's kind of hidden because on the gas tube you see the handguard is actually around it. If I remove this piece here, you can see the handguard is now missing and the gas tube is there bare on its own. So when you're looking for a new handguard, you really should link search the gas tube itself. This will then show on the vital parts the handguards that we can use. We just click on handguards. All of these wooden ones are no use, they won't let us do anything. Even the 74, this doesn't actually come with any uh, modding points for hand uh, for grips in, in particular. But basically the one you want is to go down to this, the Polymer AK100. If you look underneath, there's a Picatinny rail, and that is going to allow you to put a handguard on your weapon. So if you buy this, slot this straight onto here. Now, if you right click on the, on the new handguard that we've got and do a link search, in functional mods you're going to see we can use any foregrips that we want. We just buy a very very cheap one, stick it on, there you go. So you've got a foregrip for an AK. And this works for pretty much all of them. The, the 762 and 545 variants of the AKs all share handguard configurations so that strategy works for pretty much everything. You can get better handguards but this is the, the go-to that I would use for a budget run um, if you're trying to reduce your recoil. Next we want to take a little look at foregrips themselves. Foregrips generally have a balance between recoil and ergonomics, and you can't get something with the best of both. The RK2 is the best for recoil at minus 5, but it's at minus 2 ergonomics. Um, some of the cheaper ones only have ergonomics, so there's plus 6 for this one. This is pretty much not even worth using, to be honest, in, in any situation. So I like something as a bit of a combination of the two. The Magpul RVG is pretty good. Uh, on the fleas, is only $85. This is approximately... 9,000 rubles. Gives you minus 3% recoil and plus 7 ergonomics. I think that's a nice balance. The RK1 is also quite good. Minus 4% recoil and plus 3% uh, sorry, plus 3 ergonomics. Which I think is another decent balance. The metaphor grip is this one. Um, which is the one that's canted and is minus 4 recoil and gives you plus 4 ergonomics which is 1 extra than the other one. Not entirely sure why um, just to be canted across rather than rather than vertical, but that's the way it is. But you can see the difference in value now that we're late in the wipe is quite stark. So it's 45k for this, and on its own it's 17 grand. Is that really worth it for 30k for one ergonomics? Probably not, but people will just want to load out their guns with the most meta equipment that they can, so some of these look a bit silly. Uh, the Fortis Shift, if you're looking for ergo, it's probably the best there. Minus 2 recoil and plus 11 ergonomics. This is probably the best one that you can get without going um, onto the the AR-15 platform. There's a Hero Arms, which is uh, which is better than this. But for AKs, this is the best ergo grip that you can get. I, as I said, I normally like to use the RVG. This one is is pretty good, or the RK1, which is also pretty good. So a few other points to mention before we move on to another weapon: compensators and stock pads can really be an efficient way to boost the stats of your weapons. For most of the AK pattern weapons, you can add a recoil, recoil pad to the stock, which gives you 5% reduction for 3k rubles. You get access to this by link searching through on the stock itself. You can buy this 3300, I think this is exceptional value. Minus 5% recoil, bang that straight on. And then compensators. For the AK, there is no separate barrel for AKs, so you can link search the entire gun to go and look for these, which is quite useful. So we're going to functional mods, muzzle devices, flash hides and brakes. We don't want anything too fancy. The one that I like in here is the Spike Tactical Dynacomp. This is extremely cheap and it gives you minus 8% recoil. Now this will replace the existing compensator for the AK. So the existing one already had minus 3. So this isn't just a straight up 8, it's more like a, a 5 difference between the two. So we remove that and we pop on the Dynacomp. This will make a difference. So between the pad a decent foregrip obviously changes to something that isn't this and a compensator along with our scope on top either red dot or something like the two times and you've effectively got yourself a fairly decent working gun here and it's really on a budget this is very very cheap and the mods here really don't cost very much compared to the base gun itself I definitely think that they're worth it one other great point about this is that the mods are so cheap that nobody even bothers taking them so you'll get them back in insurance most of the time 
This makes this an excellent value build. You effectively never get rid of these. Once you start running a couple of these AKMSs with the stock pad, the compensator, maybe the grip will go and the optic will go, but you'll get the stock and the compensator back every time, unless you have the entire gun go missing. But people tend not to take AKMSs either because they're only about 19,000 rubles. Lastly, for point blank engagements, I've become a complete convert to the laser. Even the red dot and ADSing is a little too much for people who are three feet away. The beauty of the AK-100 handguard is that it has a slot on the right hand side that allows you to attach a laser. So if we take this, this is my favorite laser module. This has been added in the latest wipe, which is the NC Star Tactical Blue. It doesn't do anything other than produce a blue laser. I think it's pretty cool and it's only 5,000 rubles. Um, you slot that on, goes on the side of the AK-100 um, which has a slot for that as well as the foregrip. This thing is great. You use the letter T as default on your keypad to turn this on and this will allow you to not even ADS. You can just point the laser at people's faces and start blasting. Next up we're going to take a look at the MP5. This is a useful gun to highlight from a modding perspective as it works in a slightly more annoying way when you're not used to it. This is a good base for learning how the M4s work because they work in a very similar way for a lot of the NATO weapons. So weapons and mods build up in layers in the modding system, which means sometimes weapon parts are hidden behind some more integral pieces within. We've already seen this within the gas tube and the handguard on the AK. For the MP5, you'll need an additional mount to add the Picatinny, however this fits to the upper receiver, so when you use the flea market it won't appear directly. If you look at the actual weapon itself, the MP5 upper receiver is here as a separate piece, and this is where some of the components are hidden. So in order to fit all of the pieces to the MP5, we're going to need this B&T rail, this is the cheapest one for the top mounting of, of optics. We're also going to need a different handguard because as you can see as standard the handguard on the MP5 is completely smooth and doesn't allow for any mounting points. So as always if we're going to add a new mount on the top we're going to have to remove this. We've got to get rid of the rear side otherwise it won't fit. So we get rid of this, pop on the B&T. Cool, now that gives us a slot for supporting optics. Now let's remove the stock handguard and replace it with the TL99. Now that we've got to this stage, we can put on pretty much whatever we like. We've got the mounting points available. So stick on a foregrip, put on a scope, and laser, like I said before. Now you can switch the side of the laser if you want. I always prefer it to be on uh, either the other side or underneath, just so I don't see it when I'm playing. And then finally a compensator for the MP5. This fits on this three lug here, so it doesn't go directly on the barrel, there's a three lug first. And then that completes our MP5. So you can see the difference between where we started and where we've ended. It's a little bit less ergonomics because of the extra pieces that we've attached, but we've gone from 40 recoil down to 29. Now the MP5 has quite low recoil anyway, so it doesn't make as much difference as on some other guns. And also some of these components, once you add it all up, it's almost worth getting the MP7. But that's an argument for another time. This top rail works just like the Bastion, so you can attach anything that you want to it. You can put two times is, you can put the PK-06, you can put the Weaver rail, or you can put the EKP. It really is up to you. Some of our other value starter weapons don't have as much possibility for modding. The Hunter, for example, pretty much can't be modded at all. The best thing that you could do here, this is another dovetail style attachment that you can see here on the right hand side. Um, and so on this mount you can attach a few different things. You can attach the SVD side mount, which is a, a very, very popular mount and a lot of people buy those out. But other ones that you can get are Axiom Cobra, you can get the B13, um, and all of these allow a Picatinny rail to allow you to attach two times is, four times is, and, and whatnot on the top. The one thing to mention is that if you go for the Axiom Cobra, there is actually a side mount here that you can put a laser on. So if you want to be fighting with a hunter over long range and short range, you can attach a four times scope or something like that to the top, and then also a laser on the side. This can be quite useful in case you get caught short um, at close range by scabs or, or players. The SKS can also be modded, but it's really an overhaul of the entire gun. If we go and have a look at what you can get for this, you have to replace the stock first and the whole chassis. So there's a couple of different options, but we're really not in the budget run kind of situation when we're looking through these. So if you're going to run, run a budget SKS, I would just advise using the, the standard wooden stock, otherwise you're going to end up going for 20 grand stock and then having to get um, a few other bits and pieces to make it work, or Tapco interviews where you have to put your own stock on. I just don't think it's worth it. Just, just run the basic. It's totally fine. Just use a side mount. It's got a dovetail on it. Just use that.
So that's all for now. Hopefully this guide has helped you to figure out how to get started in modding. Let me know if you'd like to see any more mod guides in the comments, and please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Catch you next time!